Good morning. Um, I'm Keith Rigg. I'm here today to talk on behalf of Kingswan. Um, I head up the software development team for Kingswan Panels Division. I'll talk a bit about myself, the role, the team. Um, in terms of the presentation, I'll start with a brief overview of the group. I'll then take a brief look at some of our products within the, the business. I'm sure many of you know Kingspan um, being an Irish company and obviously grown significantly over the years, but it's probably best known for its, its traditional car products, roof and wall panel cladding envelope type solutions, but it's expanded quite, quite significantly over the years into a very diverse range of products um, and it's obviously it's broadened its reach geographically speaking as well. So I think it's just important to kind of give an overview of that before we talk about the the digital prefabrication and the kind of integration with BIM type solutions. Um, there's many challenges, I'm, sh I'm sure you know. So within the Kingspan group, uh, we have four product divisions. Um, I've worked within Kingspan group now for about 16 years. Um, I started out with uh, the insulation division, which is roughly 30% uh, of the, the group present day. Spent 10 years with, with that business unit. Uh, moved over to the panels division uh, about six years ago. Uh, which is, is where I'm working today, and, and as you can see, that's more or less half the, the, the group, um, so a significant you know, portion of the overall footprint of, of Kingspan, uh, and it's the original founding company of, of the group as well. You see the, uh, the split there in terms of sales by product group, so you know, again, it's just underlining kind of the, the relative size of both the insulation and, and panels uh, divisions. The geographic split, um, historically UK Ireland would have been our core markets and then probably moving more into, into Europe and, and I guess the rest of the world. In terms of the division I represent now, we'd still be very much focused in terms of UK Ireland and then mainland Europe. We made some acquisitions in Europe recently which have kind of you know greatly increased our, our market presence in, in that geography. But we'd also be responsible for uh, the Nordics, Australia, New Zealand, uh, which are fairly well advanced in terms of BIM as well, which is another kind of reason for us being so focused on it globally as much as the, the UK and Ireland side of things. So in terms of um, the, the panels division uh, and, and the group as well, you can see here roughly, you know, in terms of the timeline, the growth of the organisation. So just shows that, I guess, you know, from, from the point in time where the company was founded, uh, late 60s, early 70s, it's seen rapid growth year on year. Um, probably tapered off a little bit in, in recent times. Um, a large part of that would be, I guess, the, the global economic difficulties that we've, we've all been hit by. But we've, I guess, remained strong throughout that and, and we're continuing to grow, primarily for acquisitions now as opposed to organic growth, which would have been, I guess, the main, the main reason behind our growth in, in the past. Um, we work across a, a wide range of, of market sectors and I think, you know, in, in recent times we're pushing more into, uh, I guess, our non-traditional market sectors. So high-end retail, commercial, stuff where I guess there's more scope for, for design and, and you know, maybe leading edge architectural type, type design uh, as opposed to I guess the more traditional industrial type big sheds that we'd have, we'd have worked on in, in the past. Uh, just a quick, a quick overview of, of where we are from a, a, a regional point of view, you know, which businesses are aware. Um, moving on. Locations, we, we have a number of, of brands now for acquisitions. Um, recently we've acquired part of the uh, Tussin group, uh, group of companies, so that, that brought into our Kingspan group the Isacab and Hirsch brands, which we're maintaining as, as sister brands alongside the, Kiss, uh, the Kingspan brand, uh, and Rigidal in, in Dubai as well, which is another interesting one for us in terms of broadening both our products and, and geographic reach. Um, we, we have a number of stakeholders and we tend to get quite heavily involved in, in specification work with architects, design teams and clients, large retail uh, clients, etc. All the way through to you know, our transactional customers tend to be the structural guys, the cladding contractors, the, the people who we actually you know, do business with. Um, and in, as, it's, as I say, in many cases we'll work with the end client as well. So just to step through some of the, the products which are specific to the business I represent, and, and you will see some of these in the, in the BIM pilot model later, um, we have a wide range of products, but I guess you know, roof and wall panels would be the, the product that most people know of. Um, we do, uh, I guess, you know, more, more interesting products, height safety solutions, solar panels, um, cold rooms, uh, that, that type of thing. Um, but I guess really in terms of what we're going to look at today, you'll see some reef and wall panel solutions as well as some of our benchmark uh, range of products which tend to be more sort of modular uh, facade type, type systems. And I think they, 
more so than some of our historic products, lend themselves towards a higher degree of digital prefabrication with then rapid on-site assembly. And for that reason, we've applied some of our benchmark create product to one of the elevations on the, on the pilot model, so you'll get to see that a little bit later on. Uh, so, quick overview of the products, and I won't spend too much time on this because there's, there's quite a lot of them, but roof and wall panel, uh, we, we've, we've applied some to the, to the pilot model. Uh, I'll skip through the, the rest and just stop on the benchmark create stuff so you can see the relevance, really. So, benchmark tends to be a premium product positioned more towards the high-end retail commercial uh, end of the market, so where I guess the aesthetics are, are as important as the you know, the functional characteristics of the product itself. Uh, Benchmark Connect, I would say, is probably the furthest forward in terms of being uh, more or less prefabricated in the manufacturing facility with then a very modular, rapid on-site assembly. Uh, and for that reason, it obviously drives a higher degree of BIM modelling up front. You know, it's very much as the previous speakers have said. If, if the design isn't right and we manufacture uh, a product which is, you know, incorrectly uh, defined, then it, it isn't going to fit on site, and there will be issues uh, in terms of you know on site assembly. So we need to make sure that's that's right up front. Uh, the, the benchmark uh, create panel here, as you can see, I guess historically people would have been familiar with a single panel being a single profile, a single finish, a single colour. This is a, a, a product which takes it a stage further and allows the design team to then specify. Uh, a unique layout of, of a number of tile uh, tile configurations on the panel itself um, to achieve you know a certain finish, and that then obviously would be uh, you know laid across the elevation to produce the overall look and feel. So it is kind of almost infinitely con configurable, which causes a lot of problems from an IT perspective when you start to design systems to model and and, and kind of deal with this sort of stuff. But it but it is what the market wants, and you know we have to to cope with that. Uh, and, and I guess as well things like um, EnviroDeck green roof systems and I guess stuff which could be used in, in, in some of the uh, scenarios we've been speaking about today. Again, they're, they're more modern ways of, of looking at things where you're trying to marry the functional benefits with the aesthetics and you know, some of the, the green credentials. Uh, so I've just kind of pulled a few slides from our standard BIM deck and I haven't gone into too much detail here because I know you've probably spent time in previous events talking about BIM generically. Um, everyone's probably seen the maturity model. Kingspan has the capability to work um, both at level two and level three. Depends on the client, on the project, on, on the circumstances, but we'll, we'll work within those two, two areas. Um, within the UK and Ireland, uh, you know, we do have, because we have a broad range of products now, a broad range of customers, but I guess our core product base and customer base is split between structural customers and cladding customers, and we do have some which are, are both. They tend to be guys that have come from the structural steel background and then moved into the cladding end of things as well. Now, it, it's not always the case, but as a general rule, I would say we tend to see our structural customers being far more advanced in terms of their, their BIM modelling capabilities because of the reasons that have been outlined already today, really. They've come from an x steel Struka Tecla background. Their manufacturing processes and their role within the project dictates that they have to have a high degree of accuracy. So we tend to be able to take a model from those guys and, and clad that, that envelope um, around the, the, the structural steel work. It's not often the case when we're talking to a, a cladding contractor. They'll tend to provide you with a, a very rough 2D model at best, and quite often they'll be dealing with manual processes which aren't electronic, you know, it could be paper-based. So you end, end up having to, to do quite a lot of work in, in that scenario. Uh, in the UK and Ireland, Kingspan doesn't offer a detailing service to our, to our customers. Our customers themselves tend to do that old subcontract to a, to a detailing office. Um, having said that, in other regions, in the Nordics, in Australia, New Zealand, Kingspan will actually do the detailing on behalf of the customer. So from a global perspective, we have to have, you know, Tecla modelling and detailing solutions that, you know, deal with that steel cladding, the, you know, the total sort of envelope solution for our customer base. And I think in time, the manufacturer will have a greater role to play in, in UK and Ireland because of the advancement of, of BIM and the adoption of BIM moving forward. So it's something that I'm interested to see as, you know, as it evolves really, how, how that pans out, you know, where the demarcation lines uh, shift and whose responsibility it is to actually stand over the accuracy of those, those models. Obviously, you know, we're talking about multidiscipline models and federated models and collaborative working and sharing information. Um, 
couple of the areas that I'm very keen to look at on behalf of Kingspan going forward. I think the whole, you know, six the sustainability performance modeling side of things is very interesting one of our one of our ideals would be to get involved right at the outset um, early stages of the design process and to be able to do advanced modeling to work out how a building is going to perform throughout its, its life cycle so you know proving that actually um, investing in higher quality products can essentially you know improve the performance of the business reduce the energy costs and, and the ongoing running costs of, of that building and being able to come back and prove that at a later date in terms of the building does perform to, to specification. Like a lot of people would tend to take a very short sighted view of, of, of building and you know the design evolves as it goes downstream and it's too late to make changes and you know the building fails to perform as it ought to. And so some of those costs and time savings are, are washed away in that process. But it'd be good to be able to have everyone's information in there at the outset and to do lots of what if models and prove to the client and the design team that the benefits are there if it's if it's done in, in I guess in accordance with BIM using the right combination of products uh, and, I, and I think as well being able to hand over to the facilities management guys a detailed inventory of assets and how you manage those assets through the life cycle including decommissioning and, and refurb work if that's needed at a later date that, that would be a very powerful uh, you know, argument for a lot of clients if you can produce a business case and I think it, it comes back to the information being within the model you've obviously seen examples where there's a high, a high degree of information at, you know, a high, high level of detail in there it's really just having the modelling tools then to, to interpret that, maybe linking into um, you know, energy modelling, energy analysis tools on top of the, the general kind of 3D BIM modelling side of things. Um, th this kind of slide is really just to show obviously that we need a, you know, a, a shared project model that needs to be federated, there needs to be a collaborative way of working whereby people are working from a you know, central reference point and the information is consistently shared amongst them. You don't end up with this kind of random crisscrossing of information and everyone kind of, you know, finding issues as and when you, you, you hit them. It needs to be a little bit more coordinated than that. In terms of, I, I know a lot of people are probably aware of this, but really for me it's about shifting the, uh, the design uh, upstream and yeah, I guess if you hit that hump really in terms of the the, the effort to, to put the detail into the design earlier on, you've got a greater degree to, to affect that change, low cost and, and, and to the benefit of the project. And I think that cultural shift really of, of kind of changing when it's done and perhaps who does it is, is the thing that the industry needs to, to get to grips with really. Um, for, for me it probably puts more focus on the architects and the design team than maybe the subcontractors and the manufacturers, but of course we have to be involved at the outset to, to provide the, the information to the, the architects and the design team as well, which is one of the reasons why as a manufacturer we've tried to take a, a lead on producing our, our BIM components for our products so that they're publicly, publicly available can be imported into Revit or, or any of the leading native file formats as well as IFC and Kobe, even Excel for, for that matter, just to make sure there aren't any you know, reasons why, why they can't be consumed early on in the process. Even though we've done that though, I still don't see those components or that information coming back to Kingspan later down the stream because it goes through so many levels of filtration if you like before it gets back to us we we tend to have lost sight of, of that information because it, you know it goes through as I say different stages so it'd be good once people really are collaborating on a shared model and you do inherit back models with your BIM components in there so that then you can use them to model your manufacturing information because in a lot of cases even though we've done that we end up having to do it again so it'd be nice to see that flush through. Uh, we keep, we've got control over what we do from the point it's our front door to the point the product leaves our business, but it's, it's what arrives at the, the front door of Kingspan, which is, is the issue at the moment. Uh, and we'll probably get a, a, you know, a, a bit of a view on that from the, the pilot model. So in terms of BIM, uh, BIM objects and offering, the initial batch of objects we've released in the market uh, primarily were developed by specialist partners who have been working collaborative, collaboratively with Kingspan but we've used a lot of our internal expertise and personnel to, to drive that process. So you know, it comes down to what do you do about um, product lifecycle management? Where does your master data exist? Is it in your ERP system? Typically, it, it was a case for Kingspan at least, you, know, you tend to have enough information in your manufacturing system for finance and sales and costing and bill of materials and stuff, but it wouldn't necessarily go the, the whole way in terms of you know, the extended characteristics of the products. So where's that unstructured information 
uh, existing within the business and how do you link that to your core ERP uh, or manufacturing systems. So we spent a lot of time pulling that unstructured data together and bringing it um, in line with our ERP systems so that we can use BIM tools actually not only as um, manufacturing tools but we're actually using them now as quotation tools. So we can, we've optimised the, the modelling process down to an acceptable time frame that we can actually use it for a quotation purpose so we get very accurate quotations. Um, and then once that quote's converted into an order, the order can be raised into our SAP system electronically, it can be detailed, it can be driven down to the manufacturing uh, production lines, and, and that's all part of the CAD-CAM processes that you, you know, you've heard about already today. Uh, so I think if we can drive that process end-to-end, -end, quotation all the way through to invoice essentially, um, that, that's where we want to be. Uh, obviously you need certain checks and balances and you know, validation processes put in place there, but largely the engineering rules and the automation rules are written into the software to, to allow that to, to take place. This slide kind of explains what we've done really. We've taken master data from SAP, we've taken product, extended product information from our technical services department, we've connected the two through a, through a database system um, using various <coughs> systems integration technologies um, and then we have a pipeline utility that produces a number of output formats and I guess the most basic being the Kobe uh, format in, in Microsoft Excel. Then moving on to the standard IFC, which obviously I'd like to see people use in the future. Um, support for that's much better now, but it's still not the whole way there across all of the um, proprietary software packages that people tend to use. And for that reason, uh, we've also supplied them in, in, the, nat in the leading native um, uh, file formats for each of the packages. So I guess Revit being the, the, the market leader there in terms of market share, but also Archicad, Vectorworks and Bentley are available as well. Um, so what we want to do, and this is really from a scale perspective, because our initial pilot was a manageable number to manu or manually or semi-automatically create our BIM components, but if you think we've got you know, 25,000 products in our product catalogue, uh, and we've maybe done the first 500, uh, and it's a significant amount of time and money involved in, in that first kind of phase of work, it isn't a scalable model to continue to outsource that and to have people sat in front of a keyboard you know, manually injecting data, manually crafting geometry. So very much you need parametric templates, you need dynamic data-fed pipelines, you need a certain level of automation there uh, for that to become a scalable model. And, and that's just to catch up with the present day. You know, products evolve, you bring out new generations of products, they, you know, you decommission products. So you need to, to have maintenance in place as well as the initial creation. Um, so for that reason, we're, we're prototyping at the moment the automated pipeline utilities and we're pretty much at the point now where we can automatically automatically create from our pipeline tool set what we've previously kind of carried out manually slash in a semi-automated fashion. The next step would be to look at how we scale that up. Uh, the biggest issue actually isn't the technology to you know programmatically create these output formats, it's actually getting the data in a structured format in the first place. Um, a lot of information across the business needs pulling into a central central point of reference, that's, that's the bigger challenge really, which is a business issue, not, a, not an IT issue. So in terms of our BIM, BIM objects and hosting, we host them on our website, um, we've, got, we've got a new website coming, coming live soon, uh, which will have more of a focus on, on BIM, there'll be a BIM section that will offer a number of BIM tools and, and BIM components and guidance on, on Kingspan's BIM capabilities. We're also hosting with, with BIM Store in the UK and we plan to look for equivalents in each geography. Uh, we're talking to Reba Enterprises about the National BIM Library in the UK as well. I'm not sure what um, exists in Ireland in terms of equivalence of those tools, but you know where where would people tend to go for you know for BIM components for BIM, be it uh, generic or proprietary. Uh, our aim would be to have them available in the tools as well as on, on web portals for, for download. Screenshots of, of what you can do. One of the reasons why we went with the BIM Store solution is because the, there are plugins to things like Revit, so you don't have to leave the application, you don't have to go to the website, uh, although you can do if you choose to. This will allow you to pull them down via sort of toolbars and plugging straight into, into the model. Uh, so it's just keeping the, the architect or the designer within the tool sets they're, they're familiar with and then pulling those, those Kingspan products in. In a lot of cases, you could be looking to swap out generics for proprietary. And, and obviously then increasing the level of detail before you, you hand that model over to the next, next person in the uh, design stage. So in terms of what we tend to do, we tend to use Tecla structures. Uh, we've used that product for a number of years and it's good from my point of view that there's been some consolidation in the marketplace there. Xsteel, Strucad, Tecla are all being part of the Trimble group now and a lot of those customers moving over to the Tecla platform. And the more Tecla models we, we receive, the, the better. 
IFC we're, we're happy with. Um, obviously, if we receive things like Revit, it, it's it's more of a challenge, but it but it can be done. It just needs a bit more validation and, and possibly some rework. Um, but what we've what we've done, you'll see this in the in the pilot model uh, in more detail. We've extended the core functionality of Tecla via a number of macros and also programmatical plugins using the Tecla API. So we can essentially clad an entire elevation, providing the the steel is is in situ for us to to kind of you know guide off. Um, but the, the objects are parametric, so you can change the type of panel, the cover width, the profile, the colour, the finish, um, what flashings, ceilings, ceilings um, fixings and um, fasteners you need, etc. And it will actually clad the entire elevation in one go for you, and you can make changes very rapidly. Uh, so we've built the engineering rules into the, into the macros and the plugins to allow us to, to do that much more effectively than, than we'd be able to do if we had to do it longhand, really. Um, and Again, it's already been said several times, but Tecla BIM site is a great tool. Um, obviously, you know, coming from the same stable, uh, but being a free tool, it allows us now to, to export our models in, in BIM site format and then for, for people who don't have Tecla structures to, to view that content and, and work with it. And one, of the, one of the interesting things that we, we didn't foresee at the outset, but we're now exploiting quite heavily is we're using this now with um, design teams and, and clients and architects almost as a, as a selling tool, a specification tool, to demonstrate what the finished product could look like. Um, so it's, it's become something we didn't envisage it being, actually. So as I say, it's, it's more even prior to, to the project being signed off and the order being won. Uh, so we do get involved after the event, but we're now starting to use it much more at the specification stage, which I think is an interesting way for the commercial team to, to try and maybe leverage the, the, the kind of the adoption of, of BIM that's happening both UK and as, as well globally. Uh, we're also involved with a project in, in the UK which was originally known as Cascade, but it's, it's now, now known as Farbim. It's a, a two-year government-funded project funded by the, uh, the UK Technology Strategy Board with one of the, the, the partners, uh, there's a consortium of partners there, for projects of the, of the lead partner. And then from uh, the academ academic side, we're working with Northumbria University and Vinci as the, as the MC uh, and AEC3 who are part of, of Building Smart. So some of the guys who we're working with there uh, are very much at the core of what the UK government's doing in terms of the BIM task group and the, and the BIM working group. So it's been quite good for us because it's allowed us access to industry experts and uh, software tools that, that, we've allowed, that, that have allowed us to accelerate our own plans. Um, so it's just another kind of part of, of, of what Kingspan's doing. And I guess you know, it'd be great to have a similar level of engagement with uh, CITA and Enterprise Ireland and some of the you know, the Irish equivalent organisations in terms of what's going forward now in, in Ireland. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope I've roughly held the time. <laughs> Thank you.